let's talk. So first off, uh, hi, yeah, um, hello. This isn't how, uh, okay. So um, for those of you that don't know, I am the Movie Slayer and I started this channel in the hopes to, um, well, this channel started a long time ago. I was doing trailers and things like that. But um, I started doing a show called Movie Slayer where I would review movies in a fun way that was uh, more uh, fair. Well, I wasn't getting that many subscribers, but then um, when I was working at Verizon, um, this lovely family walks in um, with a mom holding a camera. And she was just kind of very intrusive. Um, I really didn't know anything about family vlogging um, YouTube channels, like, at all. I was completely naive to it. Um, you know, at first glance, you know, just a normal kind of fun family that drives this white van that was parked out front. Um, this much I can say. Um, my first impressions were, like I said, she was intrusive. Um, dad was very quiet. And, uh, the children were amazing. Um... The mom, her name being Ruby Frankie, um, she was getting phones for her kids. Um, I had a buddy that was working there, um, a coworker, that knew that I had a YouTube channel and uh, knew that this family had a YouTube channel with over two million subscribers. And so he gladly handed them off to me I sold them phones. I told them about my YouTube channel and they uh, graciously gave me a shout out. Overnight, I got probably at least 4,000 subscribers. Um, and I was very grateful. I didn't know this family. I didn't know their channel. Um, they seemed nice enough. It's a bug on my light. I even promised that I would review their favorite and their least favorite movie, which kind of became a trend in my channel. So I did that. Um, in the process, I watched a little bit of their channel and I began to feel more and more uncomfortable. So you might have noticed that I stopped mentioning their channel entirely. In fact, I'm in the process of removing any mention of them. Now, this is nothing against, you know, all eight passengers. You know, this is against mostly two, but entirely one and that is Ruby Frankie. The other one being her husband, which uh, that's one thing. I'm gonna go off the facts here, okay? I'm gonna go off of what I know. I'm gonna go off of what we know. Um, you know, he should not have allowed this to happen. I don't know how much he knew. I don't know how much he didn't know, but I mean, based off of the facts and what Ruby Frankie did to her kids, I mean, if anything, he was, probably being negligent. Um, and for those of you who don't know what happened, just a little recap. Um, Ruby Frankie, we'll start kind of from the beginning, okay? Ruby Frankie was being so exploitative on her channel so far as to reveal everything that was going on every single day in her family's lives. Her family had no privacy. Um, and they had an audience of a couple of million people. And so she was sharing things. This is where I got really uncomfortable is when she started sharing things that kids should never have to share with anybody but her, sorry, their parents. That's any indication as to which children had to do this, but um, really all of them. But um, there are certain things that young women probably want to keep to themselves or they, can, they, or they want to choose when and where and whom they want to share certain things with. And uh, your parents should be a safe place, not a whatever, the, whatever that was. And then to take it even further, she started developing this weird curriculum or this way of parenting she was trying to demonstrate or teach on her channel. And to put it simply, it is this side. <laughs> Suffering equals happiness. 
Mm. Yeah, so, yeah, life sucks and we become stronger as we go. I don't even know why I'm... Why do I, why do I even have to argue this? You're the parent. The judge put it best. Adults are supposed to protect children. Adults with specialized training in particular are supposed to protect children. You didn't do that in this case. In this, in this case, you terrorized children, and the results have been tragic. Exactly. And so, I wonder if the AC is going to be super loud. Uh, we'll find out. So Ruby Frankie had a business partner or a mentor named Judy Hildebrand. So at some point in this weird, like, parenting, uh, you know, raising your kid, I don't know what you want to call it, but she lent a couple of her kids over to this, this, this person so that basically they could inflict this whole suffering equals happiness methodology. And so pff, that's exactly what Jody Hildebrand did. She straight up locked these kids into the basement, malnourished them, tied them up with duct tape on their wrists and on their ankles, and spent every day punishing them for being evil. Children for being evil. <clears throat> and so, yeah. Um, maybe this parenting method doesn't work. I mean, one of the kids had to escape through a window and it go to a neighbor for, for water. And uh, yeah, so, you know, here we are. It's been, it, it, this whole thing has been going on for months, meaning the, the trial. So as of yesterday, Ruby Frankie and Jody Hildebrand have been sentenced to up to 60 years in prison. In the next month, month and a half, we'll know exactly, you know, how many years that is. I am very glad that they're being held accountable. And so now here we are. Unfortunately, I am in some way, you know, tied to this, to this family. Um, I do not associate myself with Ruby. I don't associate myself with her husband, and I don't associate myself with Jody, who I have never met. So then why am I really making this video? Well, I believe that this is the culmination of a much larger problem. Different areas of the world, different areas of the country have certain perspectives. In Utah, which, I'm not, I'm not from Utah, I'm from Texas, so this is, you know, rather alien to me. Uh, but in Utah, there tends to be um, a bit of a, an undertone and sometimes even an overtone um, of, 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 a, of a, an unreasonably high standard for what constitutes as a good person. And Unfortunately, the methodology that Ruby Frankie was teaching, which is that suffering and pain equals happiness, and that Jody Hildebrand was teaching, um, that wasn't made up by them. I mean, obviously, you know, that's, that's been a thing in history before, but, you know, history, you know, we, we learn from our mistakes sometimes. And so um, I'm, I'm sure time and time again, it has been proven that is, that's not true. <laughs> Here's the thing, it, absolutely, you know, life sucks and you know, what doesn't kill us makes us stronger. But it's kind of like what Mufasa said to Simba. I was just trying to be brave like you. I'm only brave when I have to be. Simba, being brave doesn't mean you go looking for trouble. Yeah, it, it's the equivalent of not putting yourself in situations that make you uncomfortable or that um, make you suffer. Just like you shouldn't put other people through pain and suffering because you think it's gonna make them happier somehow or make them better people. Anyways, there's just, um, th there's a certain culture here that thinks that that's a thing. And it, it's, well, it can be summed up into really one word stupid maybe a couple of other words maybe um abusive uh maybe it's 
you know, uh, encourages uh, shame and guilt culture. Um, yeah, I don't like it. Even the minor forms of it, which you can find sprinkled throughout the culture here. Um, and just to be clear, I'm not being absolutist. I'm not saying that everybody, you know, in my area, Utah, Midwest, um, are like that. But um, it has historically had that um, undertone and sometimes overtone and sometimes absolutely insane. But anywho, I just wanted to address that. And, you know, I know that I've been asked about this subject and I really just haven't had anything to say that hasn't already been said. And I hope that you feel as though I have stuck with the facts, okay? I, I mentioned exactly what we know happened. I mentioned exactly what the sentencing was. And I gave you my opinion on the methodologies that have been um, discussed in, the, in this whole thing. And uh, there you go. I do want to end it on a positive note. Yes, unfortunately, I knew Ruby. And, um, we, well, I, I don't anymore. Who? What are we, who are we, what are we talking about? But I'll tell you who I had the pleasure of, of meeting is her kids. I met all of her kids. And um, those are wonderful children. Um, th this is not me saying, oh, those kids should never have been put through this. No, no children, sh and no children should be put through what these kids were put through throughout their, throughout their entire lives. Um, but I just wanted to, you know, I, I, I kind of talked so much crap about Ruby that I wanted to say something good about the kids. And, um, I just, they just put a smile on my face when um, I sold them their phones that day. You know, um, they just, I mean, they didn't know anything other than what, you know, they were living with. And, um, you know, I was, it was very similar for me. I had a very abusive childhood. It was both a blessing and a curse that I was so blissfully ignorant um, about a lot of the things that were going on in my home and to me. Um, but I tell you what, um, I loved my childhood. Um, and that's just because I took with me the good and I left behind the bad. Um, I'm not saying that that is what everybody should do. Everybody's different, duh, we know that. But these kids reminded me of me because despite their situation, they were always just trying to have fun and they were trying to be kind, they were trying to smile. I mean, I just didn't know anything different from what it was like growing up. And so I was happy that there was some blissful ignorance there and uh, you know, that, that protected me. And I hope that that um, blissful ignorance, whatever you want to call it, um, that that was helpful to them and that they felt safe and comfortable and secure. So in the end, all that matters is that those kids are safe. They're away from Ruby. They're away from Jody Hildebrand. You know, the, the worst possible people that they could be around. Anyways, um, let's just try our best to be sympathetic and empathetic to the children's situation and uh, support them in any possible way we can. Send them love, okay? You know, just... All I can do is, you know, if they're watching this, is remind them, remind you, um, Frankie children, that if you need anything at all, I know that you have a wonderful support system already, probably. But if you need anything at all, I'm literally right here. 
I'm in Draper, Utah. I'm not far. Reach out. If you need anything at all, I'm here, okay? And if this is all you need is just to hear it, then there you go. You heard it genuinely. I love y'all. And I love y'all. Thank you for listening.